as we get ready to go into this game. Um, Aster Ares, though, going to be the team that's definitely coming in as the underdog, but you said you're still, in spite of that, also favoring the draft of Aster as well. I mean, I could literally say Aster, and then technically it would mean both this that's entire true. cast. So. That's true. No, but uh, I, I am favoring Aster's draft uh, more, just because I think this Batrider hasn't really been answered, even though it was in a first phase situation. And I think they're... I, again, we're doomed. But again, they've did a, a large smoke wraparound to the bottom side. And Somebody's dead. Probably. Uh, Ulu, I think he's going to be the one left behind because TK can just skill leap. So, Glimpse? Glimpse? No? no. Oh, he, he's a Thunder Striker. Ooh. Interesting. I mean, if this were... Okay, that's a good tip as well for Ulu. <laughs> like, he knows. He knows he, uh, he, he kind of messed up there. Wait, he's got a Fart Studios line. I didn't know that. All right, Ulu. Jenkins enjoyer. I mean, he understands Western Dodo because he knows that they go glimpse level one. That's why he's tipping Disruptor. Exactly. And he has Fart Studios uh, voice line. Really is a man of culture, this Ursa. Well, Aster get four bounty runes. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's a Ares. All right, we're going to stop with that joke. It's, it's going to become too confusing. Um, yeah, it's just one is Aster, one's Ares, right? Is that, right? Are we going to agree on this? Fair. I like nice. that idea. Good. Um, so we heard a lot of talk about this mid lane matchup of the, the Batrider versus the Ember. It feels like it's become a bit of a classic uh, over the last couple of weeks here. Um, but White Album, XWY, considering that there's sort of, you know, teams playing under the same moniker, it feels like they're probably going to have some good experience playing against each other as well. Yeah, I feel like this is a matchup that every mid laner has experienced in their pubs because oh, yeah. mid laners love to pick Ember Spirit. And then mid lane is also like love to last pick the best hero in the game. Mm. So this matchup happens so many times in pubs. And the reason why it is a scary matchup is if Batrider is able to, like he always has kill threat. And if you ever get that one kill, it kind of propels your game quicker than the Embers. And the Ember feels like he's always playing catch up. Um, so it is a difficult game for Ember where he's not able to suddenly crush mid on CS advantage, get the rune, do everything he wants. Like he's always reacting to the Batrider. And you can see too that like the early goings, it feels like there's some, I mean, uh, you know, not just what you're talking about there in terms of their experience uh, playing against other heroes that are, you know, this matchup, but also against each other. I would imagine you practice against your your other squad a whole heck of a lot, but already White Album off to a good start. Does miss the chains there. A little bit of a mix up on the XWY, but XWY has been the hero and the player for uh, Aster that people I feel like have had the most questions about too. Yeah, I mean, I feel like he's, it's always been like land consistency a little bit, or at least like his inexperience at land, I guess. Uh -huh. And uh, I feel like, at least in the previous series, he's kind of stepped up more, kind of being a commanding mid laner. Oh, no. Another chains miss. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> yeah. happens. It's all right, it's all right. It doesn't matter if he's missing the chains, honestly, right now. Like, he's 10 for 5, the, the battle rider's 4 for 1. Like, he's had an incredible spot, uh, start on December. And he just needs to make sure that when he, uh, gets dove by Batrider, that's when he can't miss the chains. Okay. If he misses it then, uh, we might So have he's issues. getting him out of the way now. And Yo. in fact, ooh, trying to go in there, has two points in that slight still. But XWY does have his bottle, gonna run on over, refill uh, and regen up. And that actually is gonna be a problem because White Album doesn't have his. He's going obviously in for that stick build. Yeah, he's got an early boots and a wand. Of course, you kind of want the boots against Batrider to disengage. Honestly, so far, so good for, for Ares. Spin up top, some damage onto Red Panda and seeing some of the issues with Juggernaut. Uh, you spin and they just sidekick and punch you and it's not a whole lot that you can do actually. Yeah, and there's a lot of punch. There's also a lot of sustain, right? You've got the sidekick, you've also got the uh, the Leech Seed Living Armor, like there's plenty of hills in this top lane. So Jug will always be chasing that next point in spin to have that kill threat. XWY is getting handled a little bit here in mid 15 and seven versus the 10 and two white album who at various points in time has been both the savior and the destroyer uh, <laughs> of this Aster Ares team um, is definitely looking like the former in this one. Yeah, I was wondering where you're going with that one. I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, Red Panda up top. They try and sustain through it. It's not going to be enough. Monet, enough for the kill, but instead, oh, Miku comes in at the very last second, able to bring him down. Good old Siamese cat, always ready to go. Yeah, and that, that's the point. He gets that second point in Blade for you, and that's kind of when Jug enters the lane, really. Like, level one spin, it's always the cool is just click him. When you get level two, it's like, uh-oh. No, you need to respect it. That additional you know, 25 damage, it does hurt quite a lot. So, yeah. 
Asta, getting the double kill in the top lane. Really well done. And four minutes in, uh, that one, I mean, I wouldn't say that we're at like a point where we're talking about salvaging things because they've been oh, able it's to over. do it. Right, it's, it's gone. It's, it's done. This, this lane is an absolute disaster at this point. Okay. Uh, no, I'm no, it's uh. Honestly, the lane's perfectly fine um, for either team. Like, either team can die and they'll always be able to return and continue farming. It's not like there's this like shutout lane. Okay, fair enough. And yeah, mid is still going to be incredibly volatile, although White Album a whole level ahead right now and keeping that momentum, trying to bully uh, XWI when he can. That's definitely the one where, I mean, you can see that XWY has been able to catch up a little bit. Not as bad as it was those first two waves. Yeah, I feel like White Album, he's just playing with that relentless aggression where it's like always spam slide, always yeah. play up in the creep wave. I think he utilized the first two, three waves perfectly to make sure he has that slight level advantage to continue that chip and pressure. And I'm not seeing a time right now where XWY can play with that I have kill potential that we do expect. Glimpse back does get the jump away though, so that keeps him fine and dandy. And that was a, a little bit scary still to be, be careful at this point. And the good thing about White Album having a good game is in this bot lane, XSS, he is going for this Meteor Hammer Doom build. And okay. So this is a build where when you're playing Doom and you go Midas, you just hit creeps but you don't pressure tower. Mm. So trading Midas for Meteor Hammer, you still farm the same speed. But now you're actually progressing your map state without having to bring people to you. Glimpse back again. Uh, Chengxi will be fine for the moment. Tree armor on him. Monet thought about chasing, but we'll go for any more. Yeah, it's interesting. Is oh my god, is XWY getting dove here? Kind of. White did. album thinking about it. Remnant forward. He's dropping low. White album. Oh, my man. That was not how it's supposed to go. Oh, and he loses his courier. Salt in the wounds. And six minutes, gets a haste rune on bat two. I mean, the dangerous part there was that that was without Lasso. So when he comes back, now he has to deal with the hasted bat rider with Lasso still. Luckily, no Firefly. So that'll be a slight saving grace. But for XWI, he could easily use this, you know, haste rune to reposition to a more aggressive position. Oh, and double bounty will pick that up and now be fully topped off in that lane. So how quickly the turntables. Yeah, I and turn they did you have like this matchup it's like the fact that ember was ahead you just have to respect it but again xwy with the haste room gets to regen instantly into bot lane and they will miss on the arrow ulu now in trouble with the doom with bobaka nearby that's gonna be another kill so in spite of the early laning woes xwy didn't get concerned makes the move around the map and is now kind of dominating this one what Oh, one perfect haste rune. Like, no other rune would have allowed XWY to make that exact play. So right. it's like incredible RNG on that front, but also White Album. He, I feel like every Ember player probably would have gone for that play there. Like, they have the level six, they have the slight spam, but yeah, a nice juke around utilizing kind of the just the melee. Oh, down distance. bottom. Ulu, while Monet is also getting dove at, they are also diving Ulu. They already Again? hit him with the meteor hammer, and now nowhere to go. <laughs> XXS was in position finds him immediately what a devastating series of events and white album well they throw out an arrow now connects onto the bat can't really go though and it's kind of what i talked about before that these white album games like something i feel like happens where he's in such a good position and then just ends up getting pulled uh, in a bad way as red panda looking likely to die again seven and oh start aster completely dumping on Ares right now. The entire laning phase has completely broken down. Like that one, of course it wasn't the Ember's fault why everything's gone, right? But the one Ember dive leads into this absolute, you know, domino effect of the entire map just getting destroyed. You have the hammer on Doom. Again, if this was a Midas Doom, this tower would not have fall, fallen. They got, would have got a couple kills, but the map wouldn't have progressed. So this is why you're seeing Doom players enjoy this build a little bit more. It is probably one of the few heroes that can buy it and it doesn't feel horrendous on. He, oh my God, he's actually going Media so Hammer the, and Midas. Yeah, this is what 3-3 uh, did the other day when they were playing. And I, I we, we were That's talking the other day about like yep. sort of inspiration and uh, in, in terms of like previously a lot of Chinese or a lot of teams all across the world would look to China and see what they're doing. And now it feels like it's switched and now mm -hmm. people are looking more at Europe as, well, Chengxi is going to get Omni-slashed and run down by Monet. 
every lane has fallen apart. It's a 4K gold lead at nine minutes. Yeah, it's anytime Ari shows in a lane now, they're probably going to get killed. Due oh to my the god, down bottom. <laughs> Doom and Meteor Hammer. He hit him from fog. Unreal. XXS finds another kill onto Ulu. This poor Ursa Bear, he just wants to get a Battle Fury. I mean, he's not going to get it. And XXS, he's got this one. <laughs> Midas Meteor Hammer before 10 minutes. This is insane. He's going to be so huge. He's going to be the biggest boy in all the lands. Yeah. I mean, somehow also, Jug is kind of keeping up with them. And by the way, Jug going Radiance. Oh, yeah. No, no, for sure. I feel like in, in this type of game, like the mischance against us and uh, Marcy will feel incredible. They're also going to pressure Marcy once again here. Yeah, Marcy in trouble. And they have the glimpse. Yeah, so she's... Mega dead, although, well, turn now wanting to fight. The jump forward. Oh, Shanksy, can he do it? Yes. Finds the kill onto Monet. That was sorely needed. Uh, so a much, much deserved kill there. And also, we did see the other one. Bobaka ends up going down. Yeah. I was holding with my bated breath. I was like, you know, Marcy, she's going to get this ult, and she's going to be able to turn this Oh, Oh, of course. She turns it. Yep. And I have to be instantly joining okay. the fight once again. Well, that's a, a little bit sad for Shanksy if he can't get away, but it looks like he will manage to, as White Album also makes the rotation top with a DD remnant forward. Oh, is he going to go too far again, though? Arrow, oh, good pull there. And then we'll fire play. Disruptor tanking that one for the Bat Rider and a glimpse to try and make sure that he stays away. XWY still being dove, does not have any points in flame break, and yeah, they're just going to make the move over, find that kill. So Ares not giving up yet. They cut this lead in half, actually. A and now if they too. can find XXS, this is huge. The arrow connects. What a turnaround. And it all starts with the Marcy off lane. They have to have to respect that Ares. They have a very skirmishing lineup in this early game. Sure, the lanes didn't go great, but they will have the damage if they can slowly poke them down. And yeah, it feels like a... Got a little bit too excited with how perfect the, the start of the game went for Asta. I mean, that's crazy. Like, looking at the graph, we were sort of soaring towards that, like, 70% win rate or something, as they're not going to connect there onto Ulu. He gets away, and now it, we're back to almost even. I mean, 4K gold lead at 9 minutes, only 1K at 11. Yeah, this will be the point in the game where Ares, they need to continue finding kills because their gameplay won't, won't allow them to find the farm as quickly as the Radiance Jug, the Fire Fight right. Bat, the Midas and Media Hammer Doom. So this is now where you see them smoking up, sweeping across the map. They're trying to find a couple kills, trying to, you know, condense Asta to overlap their farm. And if they aren't able to do that, we will probably see that net worth build once again for Asta. Well, you did see the scan connect onto Red Panda, who was over in the river there. So it's kind of an understanding by Aster of where Ares is at. As the smoke is going to dissipate, Moonlight Shadow is still going, trying to find one XXS in the jungle. Red Panda is there, has the overgrowth. The Doom is used, but this is going to be a dead XXS. So Meteor Hammer Midas, just a nice little piggy bank for Ares to pop. Yeah, and that will be one of those small differences between you know, a person who is a master at the Doom and who's someone who's still trying to maybe learn this new player style of Doom. Because if this was 33, he would have just AFK'd bottom. Right. He's not TPing to these top fights. He's not doing any of these shenanigans. He's like, I am the Doom. I sit bottom. Anyone who comes here will get doomed and we'll fight them. Static Storm. Oh, nice. nice job. I mean, nice. Well played. White album. You know, in spite of his early woes, definitely still uh, got some sauce to him. And he's trying to get into, I think, a BKB. Uh, yeah, has it queued up already. So if they can get into BKB there, and then also BKB on Marcy with already the armlet done, that could buy some space for Ulu to sort of finish off this Battle Fury and put them in a good position. Oh, don't get excess again. Chase glimpses there, but the arrow comes out. The connection, and this is an absolutely enormous kill as he dies again. XXS going down. White Album with the haste rune. They will manage to find the chains on the both, trying to see if he can get this kill on the Disruptor. Thinking about going for it. Oh, not quite enough. So, Pichu living with the raindrops there. And Ares still playing in a very aggressive manner. I mean, three key kills on this Doom. And it really brought themselves into the game. And meanwhile, Earth is just happily sitting bottom, just hitting these little old creeps. Yeah. Only a Claymore away from the Battle Fury. It, uh, honestly, quite impressive from Ares. I think it leans more towards 
Asta's kind of casual entry to the mid game. They weren't really perfectly setting up their heroes because, again, laning phase was so good for them. Yeah. Whilst Ares is like, when you're behind, it's always like, how do we improve? How do we get back into this? And they clearly were communicating exactly what they need. And yeah, they're capitalizing. Oh, on this it. is weird, though. Uh, sort of battle going on on two fronts. And now the Static Storm down on to the Ember. White Album, though, glimpsed back, trying to walk away. A Slight of Fist keeps him alive. XWI very low, looking for the finish off there. Team they can get it with DK. Red Panda is in too far. Another round of the Slights. Red Panda dead. And TK could not bring down that Bat Rider. So in the end, they do only lose one for a couple pretty big ultis used. Yeah, I think the fact that the White Album was able to survive the start of that fight, that's pretty important. And we haven't really mentioned it, but the tree, he's he's gone for a very unconventional build, the 0-4-3 build okay. on tree. Like, you would argue that maybe like a casual point in grasp would have actually slowed down the bat to then get the kill there. But I haven't seen this too often, but yeah, he's really committing to the, we will run around this map and we will try and slap as many things as possible. We're mm. not AFK farming and it's kind of working out for them. Yeah. Well, they do have very early Radiance, 15 minutes for the Juggernaut on top of FaZe, Rayfan, and even a Bassy Ring uh, just chilling right now. So Monet, he's going to become a problem. Now, there is still that Battle Fury about to be completed on Ulu. So both of these cores trying to get into farming oriented items with Monet pretty far ahead, uh, almost 2k gold in the lead of Ulu. Yeah, and this is why Monet already wanted to play most likely this Juggernaut. You're a Manta buying hero to yeah. deal with the, the tree and protector. That's pretty crucial. And on top of that, like we've already mentioned, evasion against Marcion uh, is pretty good. Even though they are somewhat natural MKB buyers, they don't like buying it within their first, let's say, three or four items. Okay. So it always allows you to utilize Radiance quite nicely. I mean, the one thing that I will say also is that after like the early turnaround fights, it feels like Marcy's farm has sort of fallen off a cliff a bit. Um, obviously, this is going to happen if you have this hero that's just sort of not getting kills when all the action is going on. Um, so, Chengxi still has a lot of potential, I think, in these next couple of minutes to take a fight, but are they just going Roche right now? I mean, they, ca they, they easily can with this type of lineup. Like, yeah. they, have, they have no reason to be afraid, and especially after the, the key kills that they've been previously getting. Sure, they're not building a net worthly, but this is the type of play that allows you to maybe get to that point where you can finally make your own lead. All right, DD on to Amber. White Album moves in. They find the kill on Disruptor. Would have loved to find a bigger one there, but they'll have to suffice for that for now. And yeah, Aegis on the Ursa and only a thousand gold lead for Aster. And that's with the Doom. This Doom with this ultra greedy build who is trying to go into the BKB next. So we'll see what these next couple of minutes uh, pull out here, but Ares very much a good recovery uh, as we've talked about. Yeah, and once again, like because Ares have this pickoff potential, the, the kills have forced this overlap on Asta, like I mentioned earlier. So this Doom and this Jug, like, they aren't, you know, running away with the net worth. Like, the fact that Ember's even able to be within 200 gold of this double greed farm Doom it is yeah. commendable based on the the map play that Asta Ares have been able to present themselves so far. Definitely. No, I'm not going to lie to you. After I saw White Album die in the mid lane, I was like, Are you ready sober? To, I was like, this, this thing's over. <laughs> There's no way he's coming back from this, surely. Uh, but yeah, he is absolutely pulled away with it. Really impressed with White Album. Yeah, and this this first Aegis isn't going to be like an Aegis where they're like, okay, let's go. Let's go win the game, boys. Let's go slight chains arrow. No, it's let's farm triple BKB. Yep. And then look for it. You know, like Embers, one component away. Marcy's, one component away. Ursa's, yeah, yeah, about two. So it's like they're, they're about say four to five minutes from having an incredible timing most likely when Aegis expires that's when these three BKBs come in well and the sort of thing too that we hadn't really talked about that much as uh, nice deny there um, was the natural matchup of Juggernaut versus Ursa which I absolutely as Red Panda is well maybe not gonna die instead they show up with the Marcy and eviscerate XWI. Bobica tries to get out. Looks like he was able to play a sneaky little positioning to get himself out of trouble. Yeah, like this Batrider has zero game, by yeah. the way. Like there is there is no play style for this Batrider to present right now. Other than buying BKB and like soaking up some of these spells, it is near impossible for him to stand his ground. Like, yeah, Aster Ares have really put this Batrider in the bin. A hero that Batrider traditionally, like if you look at these heroes, I think Batrider players love this type of game. 
Yeah. But yeah, he is low catch up and the net worth reflects it. 6.9k gold. Ah, and sort of the difference maker in a lot of ways uh, has been Bobaka in terms of getting some pretty good farm for himself. If you look at the entry right now, we saw a really good uh, game the other day from Why You Smile playing on the Ench. Uh, already Dragonlance done with the fluffy hat. So it feels like he's going to need to be kind of a big damage dealer to help out. But he also kind of gets rocked by a lot of these heroes, I feel like. You know, untouchable, uh, fine, attack speed 120 reduction. But you're up against overpower. You're up against Marcy shenanigans. Like... I, I feel like they're going to have avenues to kill Bobaka. For sure. I mean, Astaris have avenues to kill heroes, but they also have ways in which they, they can outplay themselves. Their heroes are very much initiating, where they put themselves in positions to potentially get punished if they're not really clean with their initiation. Also, you're playing up against the Doom turnaround, Static Storm turnaround, even Juggernaut with some Omni Slash to you know disengage right. from the fight. So, as to Ares, it's like, if they start accruing a lead or a position of let's go and take a fight, they always in the back of their mind need to respect their positioning because Bobaka, if he does scale to be this like awesome core style Ench, yeah. he just sits at the back, throws out the artillery, that's when you can't really kill him off. So right. this and game of course, is still in the balance. Trying sure. to get away from Disruptor is never going to be good. So really? if they ever are playing on the back foot or like you said, get in a little bit too deep of a dive, which we have seen before from this team, uh, then suddenly you're not going to be able to make that escape happen. But uh, at least for now, Master Ares holding on to a pretty uh, comfortable position in spite of being down uh, around that 2,000 net worth. It's it's not really that big of a, a deal it feels like right now. I I don't we don't see this often, but I think we've got five brand new BKBs complete. It plays. Ursus is about to come out. It's on the courier. So like. I feel like both teams right now should be saying, like, this oh. is the timing. And already, Aster's smoking up to the top side of the map. They were anticipating this move, and now they see that Marcy is there. But well, no she spells. realizes it. They, they had a sentry. They saw her for a brief second. Just a second there. She does have that BKB. Waiting now. Going. Immediately caught her. Tries to walk away. She got Armlet off. Is that going to be enough to keep her alive? White Album now. Glimpse. But they chase down and looking for this Disruptor in trouble. So Marcy living through the doom and well, they leave behind the disruptor for a moment, but now ready to chase for more. Doom down, they're ready to keep going. Yeah, it's a pretty awkward one because they see their smoke break. Marcy walks out of sentry range. Of course, they don't want to throw disruptor spells on because they know she has BKB. Right. So it wasn't the clean initiation and there wasn't that instant stun to prevent her from B BKBing. So yeah, that, that one quick finger and now suddenly Asta aren't really able to capitalize on their smoke. Speaking of quick BKBs, gets out of trouble there. But now the root, the control, has to use the lasso just to try and stay alive. And shang -Chi in trouble. No this BKB. time is going to get punished. So yeah, gets the BKB off last time around. Not going to be the case this time. And Bobaka going to fall. TK able to run in there and find the kill. White Album, BKB out. As you said, all of these newly revealed BKBs the fight a little bit uh, testy back and forth, and it ends up being Aster coming out a little on top. How many times can we say BKB? That right. was a lot of BKBs. <laughs> True. <laughs> well, they don't have a BKB now. But Doom does have a BKB now. Nah, he's going to not use it. Won't decide to go for Don't grieve. <laughs> I think that White Album's okay here. Still need to be careful. Broken. Oh, good slight. But the damage, the control. Okay, he just kills him. Hey. Ember, Ember had a remnant now. Yeah, he just blind? didn't have Where mana, is it? I think. Uh, mm, oh yeah, I guess he didn't, yeah. I mean, it was towards the end there, but he might have had it at, at some point. Unfortunate for uh, Aster Ares there, as they lose a couple of key heroes. Trying to get Ulu more and more farm. He's got a Blink Dagger now on top of BKB. And already XSS realizes the lack of stun. He's like, okay, I'm going to pick up my shard quite quickly now. Increase my stun time on Blade. And that will now give me a window to actually use Doom because it's like, it's pretty awkward for Asta. Right. Like when, when they initiate, there isn't a like, gotcha. Like sure, Batrider down the line will, maybe when they get a Blink Dagger and 500 gold, but they really need to make sure when they jump, they're actually locking down that hero. Because of course, when you have Bat Doom in the same team, you can delete pretty much two heroes from the start of the fight. But yeah, right now, not really able to do it. And still only a 4K lead. Still quite a, 
a balanced game, but of course, Aster's cores are the ones that are slowly, you know, creeping away a little bit. Which Aster? The, the one on the right. <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah, and it feels like in order to try and combat that for Ares, they're going to need to try and secure this next Roshan. But Aster making the solid moves and, you know, punishing around the map when they need to. Uh, Lyrical? Yeah, what's up? Which Aster? <laughs> it's the one on the right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the guy. Um, Blink Dagger coming up for XWY2. And... Well, we'll see. Are, are Ares going to try and pressure again? It looks like they might take a uh, another fight since Roche is capable of respawning. Do you have a smoke on Marana? One minute, ten, respawn, go. Yeah, let's see it. No, oh, ah, two. UK maps, what can you do? Rough. Oh, well, two minutes. Oh, two minutes probably favors Asta. Um, Ares right now kind of want to have that instant Roshan right at your doorstep. Get the Aegis and then sweep across right. the map. Ulu. Spots him. Lasso there. TK ready for the follow-up. Doom, everything dropped. And yeah, that is a big problem. So they managed to take down one. No buyback on the Ursa. And now I feel like that two-minute window actually kind of comfortable for uh, Aster Ares. Yeah, they're loving this long res yeah. respawn time now. I think Ulu needs to be careful. He's not had the best of games, of course, sitting at Norton 4. Died a couple times in laning phase, then died again to a solo Doom. This being his fourth death, like he, I think when you're in the lead on do on Ursa, that's when you can throw your body to be that smoke ganker or smoke breaker, sorry. But with this kind of rough of a game where you're always kind of playing catch up a little bit, I think you should probably maybe trade off, let's say the like a Morana. Let okay. her walk up, she can leap out, punish it on the glimpse of something, then you make the fight. So Asteris might need to readjust a little bit in their positioning. So one other thing that's kind of interesting, you're talking about the Marana there and her being a bait that you can send out. Uh, she also might be scaling a little bit better than we would see from others. Does have the Philosopher's Stone. No mm -hmm. Philosopher's Stone on the side of main Aster, um, which feels a little disrespectful to say main Aster, but whatever, <laughs> yes. we're doing it. No, no, no. That, <laughs> it clearly says on Wikipedia, it's yeah. like the main team and like the sister team. I All think right. it's sister team, yeah. It's like, you know, that. You're allowed, you're allowed some A's in the B's. Sometimes B's can be better than A's and whatnot. Look at this, though. Smoke up. Going to try and get some wards down. There is already Observer up. They spot him immediately. Bobica wants to take that one away. And they will manage to take away both. Poor staff. That keeps Bobica alive as Roche is about to respawn. But look at this. They have a creep already in the pit. Plenty of vision in the pit. Oh, but wait a minute. Oh, and it respawns oh, right then. No one knows. Dude, oh my god. If they took like a second longer. And now Aster, they find their lasso on Timurana this time. Does not have buyback. And this is as Doom is going to start to come back off cooldown 20 seconds away. But they're going to take the fight beforehand. Immediately now onto the Batrider. XWI overgrowth dead after the BKB clutch play. Now they need to be careful, though. There is a buyback on that Batrider available, and Doom is back up. They're going to check Roche. Ulu sees that it's up, and do they decide to take it right away? Thinking about it. it has to be a very dangerous situation, though. Bobica walking high ground as Ulu starts to take Roshan. They could think that they're going up high ground, but they're in the pit still. Aster not aware that this is going on. Ulu decides to call it off, and now the jump forward, and Doom is ready. They got him caught and dead. Do have buyback on that Ember. They're going to need to use it. He comes back into the fray. They drop down the Static Storm. Not good enough, but a good stun coming from the Marcy. And then the Omni Slash chasing down Ulu onto the low ground. He hasn't raged back up in one second. Ready for the turnaround. Throws it now. Seeing if he can bring down any of these heroes. Marcy trying to help out desperately. Ulu hoping to get away, but the Radiance Burn. It's going to be enough. They find him, though. There's the Dispose on Dispose. White Album trying to clean up here. If he can't beat the hammer, the hammer. That's it. That's it. That's it. On to two, but it was the BKB still keeping White Album alive. XWY respawns, comes back in. And in the end, a series of craziness. Red Panda barely survives there. And Roche still stands. Oh, it's such a shame. That dude was just, you know, role-playing tight on it quite nicely at the tail end of that fight. But oh, oh. I, I think, again, for Aster, it's like, they're, they're struggling because their Batrider doesn't really have presence, right? The, dies at the start of the fight, and then it's like this this clutch 4v5 the entire time. And, of course, as to Ares, thank God we have a replay. There's so much happening in that. It's like, you, you kill off the Ember, 
and then you're able to from there just pivot to the rest of the fight but of course white album buys back re-enters the fight and now there's no way for Asta to disengage from this area they have to just commit stand their ground hope to get some big pickoffs and it's pretty unfortunate the omni slash actually goes straight to the ursa i think if it may be stuck onto the marcy right. it would have given them kind of a better platform to take this fight but uh so was tanky enough to just prolong it and annoy Monet and we are gonna you know get to see XSS use this media hammer once again but <laughs> oh, it was it was juicy it was close I mean and so the other thing about that too is it was it, you imagine if like Ursa just instead had a little bit of lifesteal or something or if Marana was still alive at the start of that one it would have made such a huge difference but XWY walking in now Ulu he's gonna get lassoed they try and pull him back is it enough for the kill yes indeed no doom, no problem. They still got the hero, and that should be avenue for Roche now on Aster, because I don't think White Album feels comfortable going in like this. This is such a... I feel like this entire game is just on, like, XWY's back, right? Yeah. Like, if Batrider's initiation is clean, Aster crushed the fight. If there is, like, any overgrowth turnaround, any four staff disengage, any way to annoy Batrider, completely different story. Oh, and TK... He tried, he, he tried. He tried. tried. Needed to be moonlit. That might have been enough there. So we'll get killed off. And I mean, you know, it's this is, I think, one of those moments as that nullifier is done for Monet. Oh, my God. Uh, get, went for the disassemble play. Also now has the Aghanim shard. God, that, he he got so scary now. Yep. Because tree armor gone, like all of these things. I mean, against Ursa as well, you never really get to utilize overpower. So yep. it's... It's really good for the 1v1 duel as well. Side and then kick? he just got Butterfly. <laughs> yeah. That was a really nice usage of Radiance, right? You just mentioned already the you buy Radiance, you farm, you disassemble, nullify Butterfly. You still have the evasion deal with Ursa. You also then prevent Ursa from scaling with his damage. I, I mean, I will say that I think Butterfly is still kind of a garbage item in a lot of ways. Oh, it's like easily up there as yeah. like shit. Like, don't worry. <laughs> like, we're not going to beat her on the bush here. But like, when you get it, pre 30 minutes yeah. in a game where you're snowballing and you already have like shards to enable you've got bash like yeah. this is the game where it feels good at the end of the day it's a bad 5,000 gold item but it's a 5,000 gold item yeah, yeah and that's exactly. the difference right now just about a net worth between the ursa and the juggernaut so if they can keep this going if they can maintain that lead over ulu uh jug should have a really good game there is that weird interaction where you don't use overpower charges when you're missing attacks. So that should help the Ursa a little bit, but I don't know if it's going to matter in these ones. The way that the games and fights have been going, Aster feel like they've kind of just been dominating. Yeah, and especially if you look at the Ursa's build, he, he's respecting the fact that this Batrider has found him a couple key times. So he's going Lincoln's. Yep. But now he's going to see the Butterfly's like, I wish I had MKB. So now it's like, he's not chasing for one item to play the game. He's chasing for like two big items. And that's why Aster, it's like they're knocking on the tier three bottom. Like there's no reason for them to be scared at any point now. 12k, 12K lead, right. any objective should fall for them. Particularly with this Aegis still sitting there yep. on Monet. Uh, did actually take that level 20, the the Blade Dance Lifesteal talent. Um, so kind of a cool one to take for the Jug, as the melee rack's now going to be hit. Does have the Abyssal Blade recipe, going to go finish off the Vanguard in just a second. And White Album can only just kind of look on as these creeps start to fall. And the Although the wraparound, the they, they see it. it, they know that's happening. And a really good ward in this area too. They ping out exactly where they need to go. Just look at his Ulu. positioning, just the, holding this off side. The rest of them up on the high ground now. Do they realize where they're at? Red Panda has the blink dagger ready to go for a counter initiation. If the BKBs come out, breaking XXS's blink, Bobica steps forward. They want to find him. If they catch sight in a moment, that tree is just going to explode. They jump up to high ground. Now they see everybody. Lasso is there on to Marcy, and that is going to be the end of the fight for Ares. It's like you respect Asta Ares trying to make this wrap around, but Asta, they, just, they set that up beautifully. Sentries to check for random wards, scan for the smoke, high ground ward to do, you know, to prevent that, you know, advantage. Hugging that southern side of the, the, the tree line, it's really nice. Like even when they're ahead, they're respecting Asta Ares as if they have like an equal uh, footing to take that fight. Oh yeah. Now they are recognizing indeed the uh, potential danger that can come out from being a little bit too cavalier with their play around here. Uh, and you see that Ursa is going to be trying to queue up the components of that B, uh, MKB next. 
has the javelin done, even though he's still got the linkage. He's so indecisive. Away. He's like, can I have both, please? Right. Is there any way that I can just, just get, wait, give him the 30 stone? I mean, the, <laughs> the <laughs> other thing is that, uh, I mean, I guess javelin is kind of a little mini form of it, right? He gets the little passive pierce. Yeah, yeah it's like a, it's a, a mini MKB. Soft touch. Yeah, it's, I've never heard anyone describe it like that, but you know, in these trying times for Aster Ares, they'll go for anything. Jump forward, find Bulbica. Oh my God, the Hurricane Pike and the Null Fire. You're not overpowered, but you know who is OP? A little bit of Marcy every now and then. And of course, the Ogre Seal Totem, which gets her out of harm's way, but that was the BKB used. Now with no Disruptor, can Ares look for more? Blink forward, but not gonna try and go for the all-in play there on the tree. Doom's kind of in. Yeah, Doom is very in, and that is an Aghanim Scepter Doom. So, dead tree, no way to help him, but that is Doom down. Will that give him enough confidence to go for something here? Probably not with the DD on Monet. Oh, yeah, you do not go near him right now. Omni Slash up in 20, but his age is also going to be down in 20, so jump forward. Finds it, stun, but a four staff. Bovica, again, that hero in position, and the well, they are the fighting. DD. It's, no. it's a lot of damage. Monet, it will still absolutely shred through them if they're not careful. So comfy for the moment oh, for GG. Aries, and they're done. Okay, sure. They just call it. That's fair. What a, honestly, it was a much closer game than I expected. Just in regards to how Aster Ares bounced back from the laning phase, I think there was a window where this game could have easily been some Aster 8 0 from laning phase into 20k lead, boom, stomp, you know? Right. And I think RTK is not happy with this win. Like, really? No, he, he, he will okay. be like, he will go into this replay and be like, Doom, you TP top, you've ruined the game, you know? Yeah. You die three times, you've ruined the game. Like, I think Aster actually made quite a lot of mistakes that other teams would have exploited. Okay. Maybe at lands, mage and stuff, but obviously in the region, mm -hmm. not as exploitable. Um, but for Aster Ares at least, I really enjoyed how they swept across the map. I just think that if they find that Roshan or that big kill, then they continue it. So kind of a, a shaky game, I think, from both fronts. Okay. And I'm looking to see how they kind of clean it up in game two from either side. No, I, I agree. I think that there are definitely some elements to it where it didn't feel great. Mm -hmm. um, I think XWI in the early laning stage there were some issues there but they did end up pulling it together in the end and uh you know they had a clear idea they had a clear draft uh sort of theory in their mind and you know it was built around the greatest hero of all time juggernaut so yep, the with best that hero. we're gonna head on back to the panel <sighs> all right all right juggernaut wins a game the first juggernaut win in the dpc this particular <laughs> tour but <laughs> But I refuse to believe Juggernaut was the primary cause of this victory. I'm going to put it all on XXX. You know, yes, it was the meme hammer pull we saw from 33. I'll also put onto the support duo as well. But what do we make of this performance here, Lacoste? Did Juggernaut, is this actually a decent hero? Or was it just as meh as I was trying to paint it as earlier? It looked okay. I mean, I, I was like, Juggernaut's the most iconic hero, I would say, besides Pudge and maybe Crystal Maiden. Like, his toolkit is... Uh, Always going to be good because you have like built in magic immunity, like you have healing ward, the sustain, uh, relatively easy to play as a hero. But in this game, I, I don't mind it. I also love the build that he was going for, the Radiance Mantis style build, something that we've seen has been popular on different carry heroes as well, where it Radiance is so much cheaper now. So you want to buy it, especially against hero like Ursa. And also it was a great nullifier game overall because you you remove overpower, you remove uh, living armor and also sidekick from Marcy. So like they, the type of game that Astro Ares wanted to play is buff up this Ursa and then he goes ham in these fights with all these extra buffs. It never happened. There was a, like he did disassemble that Radiance build into Nullifier and then build Butterfly. So I'd say some new tech coming out from the Juggernaut with this Radiance build. So I'm gonna, I didn't see, we're gonna see. I thought people are just gonna be like, oh, yeah. this is a Radiance. It, Helped him with the farming, and then he just disassembled and got a better item. Yep, got the fastest Radiance all time on this hero. Third fastest Nullifier because of that disassembly that's ever been done on this hero as well. But the main issue here, Kezu, is that this Ulu Ursa, the ostensible win condition, wasn't necessarily able to make a big impact in this game. I feel really bad for White Album, right? This was an incredible performance coming in from him. He beat the Batrider lane that we didn't expect him to be able to do. He's the one that takes the tower first, made all these massive movements around the map. Half the team fights that Aster Ares won is the fight where he's doing well. But unfortunately, the Marcy and the Ursa behind him, his supposed backup duo, the ones that are supposed to do the physical damage, 
never really felt like they got online.